But thank you all so much for uh, for making it here today. I understand this is the room where you guys have been doing some family Christmases over the years, so I think it's really cool that we get to we get to do the celebration here. My name is Father Nick Vance. I'm one of the priests over at Our Lady of Grace, just across the street, uh, over the way, and apparently um, a regular feature on sort of what gets watched in, on Sundays, because we get broadcast on Fox 9, which isn't at all stressful. Um, but uh, if you've never been to a Catholic funeral before, it's the best five hours of your life. <laughs> I, I shouldn't make that joke. I've been warned to, to keep this short. Though, so. <laughs> No, so, it, so it'll be, uh, we'll do a short prayer at the beginning and, and sprinkle the urn, uh, and then we'll have uh, a eulogy, and then we'll have uh, a short mass, um, and then, of course, donuts uh, afterwards, <laughs> which are required for the legitimacy of a mass. Did we get everyone, or are they still walking in? Uh, they're still walking in. Okay. All right. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. The Lord God lives in his holy temple, yet abides in our midst. Since in baptism Richard became God's temple, and the Spirit of God lived in him, with reverence we bless his mortal body. God of faithfulness, in your wisdom you have called your servant Richard out of this world. Release him from the bonds of sin and welcome him into your presence, so that he may enjoy eternal light and peace and be raised up in glory with all your saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning, family and friends. Please bear with me as I, this will not go that smooth. <laughs> Thank all of you for gathering here today. As everyone knows, I'm Ken, and I have the honor of reflecting upon my father, my hero, Richard, a.k.a. Grandpa, and Great Grandpa. We are here together this morning to celebrate and remember a remarkable life. It was touched, he touched each of us in a very unique way and celebrated and remembered, and we're here to celebrate and remember his remarkable life. Richard has not just, is not just my father, he was a beacon of love and optimism, a man whose faith filled heart and hardworking spirit left a profound legacy. 
that we will all cherish forever. At the grand age of 92, Richard's departure leaves a space that is immeasurable, but it also leaves so many memories and will continue to guide us, inspire us, and keep his spirit alive among us. Reflecting on the immense journey of Richard's life, it's clear that he achieved an array of accomplishments. As a brilliant businessman, he traversed the globe, visiting a staggering 63 foreign countries. Yet despite such incredible professional success, he always regarded his marriage to my mother, Marie, and his family, his greatest achievement. What made his heart truly swell with pride was not the boardrooms or the business deals, but those cherished moments spent with Marie and the family that they had built together. He often marveled at how he and Mom moved from Chicago, the five Creter kids, up to Minnesota, and he loved watching our family at gatherings and growing and looking at pictures till we grew to at least 38 strong now and witnessing the Creter clan expand and flourish. I don't know what my time limit is, but I might go over. I cherish many memories from my childhood when Richard and Marie would take us to the state parks, immersing us in the tranquility and beauty of nature. Sometimes we'd cook corned beef, hash, and eggs together in, a crisp, in the crisp morning air. Dad was also known for telling us we were going to take the scenic route to everything. Anywhere we were going, he would stop at the uh, little roadside plaques to read what was the significance of that prairie or that waterfall or whatever it was. We stopped and learned about all those things. In those moments and experiences, Richard's love and devotion for the family shone brightest. He made those moments feel special to all of us, even though we didn't always realize it at the time. Dad consistently added spice to life. He turned the average Edina yard into an international garden experience with multiple Japanese rock gardens and custom-built concrete bridge and a working waterfall uh, drinking fountain that came out of lava rock all constructed by hand, by us, under Dad's careful tutelage. Dad also gave us experiences with things like rock polishing, wine and beer making. Richard loved taking family trips, probably most of all. It was together this time. Just to mention a few of them, and I'm going to miss a number of them, but Florida, Wisconsin, Illinois, Washington, Mexico, and of course everybody's favorite, multiple, Hawaii. Richard had a gleeful knack for turning life's ordinary moments into extraordinary ones. Even right up until uh, two days before his passing, um, Dad was in his wheelchair and, like always, wheeled across the room for a crash with Mom in her wheelchair, tapped her on the knee, and said, his, his words are always the same, Hi there, cutie. How are you? Is a testament a testament to his timeless affection for mom. Their love story was one for the ages, enduring, genuine, inspiring. His devotion to mom, Marie, was complete and never wavered. The thing I will miss most about Dad Richard is the joy of his positivity. He approached everything with a positive nature. He went through the whole positive mental outlook thing long before it was recognized in the self-help industry, as it is today. Whether tackling household chores with plenty of lists for Saturday mornings or orchestrating maintenance projects with the grandkids at the cabin. He brought a smile to every task and taught us the value of hard work and perseverance. Perhaps his favorite sanctuary was the cabin, a place where he found peace among family. He would sit there listening to the stories, laughing with the kids, laughing with the grandchildren, 
great grandchildren, um, and the he would sit there most of the time and just enjoy the time. He wouldn't speak as much as as he could, and he just enjoyed being with us and listening to all of you. I can picture him now sitting on the porch, content and smiling, absorbing every bit of life experience shared by his children and grandchildren. Mostly, he listened, learned, loved every minute of simply being present with us, his family, his legacy. As we gather here today, my deepest wish is for Richard to be remembered as the faith-filled family man that he was. He was a loving husband to Marie, mom, and though and through his example taught us the heart, that hard work and effort are the keys to success and happiness. More than anything, he dedicated his life to making ours better. Everyone in this room, in some shape or form, is here because of Richard. He supported us, mentored us, and literally made life possible for so many. As I conclude my remarks, which are woefully inadequate and far too brief for his life, it is all of our responsibility to share stories about Dad, about Richard, so that we can keep enjoying and loving him. I find solace in these words adapted from Emerson to leave the world a bit better, whether by a garden patch or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. By that measure, and many others, Richard's life was a massive success. One day after Thanksgiving, we all want to thank you, Richard, for being our guiding star, our steadfast rock. You are our rock, our rock star. We'll carry you in love and with us always. May you rest in peace, knowing you have left the world a far better place, surrounded by family who love you beyond measure and who will carry on your legacy of love faith and perseverance. Let us find comfort in the shared memories and lasting impact of Dad's life and in the knowledge that the faith he imparted upon us will bind us together forever. Goodbye, Dad. For now. God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Richard, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's now listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the response 
is, the Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides, oh, that's all right. he guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. there is nothing my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you're up, my son. With your rod and your staff, they give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord. When he saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. You would think the priest would know when to say the right line. <laughs> Apparently not. I'll, I'll chalk it up to being a, a baby priest. I'm only six months at this. <laughs> Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. The line I heard recently, mourning, you know, grief is love persevering. Grief is love persevering. And that, like, it, it, it can seem so strange because it's, you know, you, you care so much for, for this other person and that you're, you're trying to square that with just the, the, the present pain that, that you're going through as you mourn their loss. But, but they're actually one and the same. Grief is love persevering. Persevering in the midst of the pain. Persevering in the midst of the sense of loss. Uh, as we heard in the in the eulogy, Richard was a man who loved deeply. He loved deeply. He loved his bride. He loved his family. Um, he he was larger than life, it, it sounds like, you know, gregarious and joking and, uh, and, and just sort of a, a sense of community about him always. Um, his, his dedication towards love, I, I think, taught many of us how to love. He, even in just sort of hearing his stories, his, his tireless service, his zeal for life, you know, desiring to spend time with family, um, I think shows us so much about love and most fundamentally shows us so much about God. God who is love. God who brings us here today. And so we draw near to God here today, right in the midst of our grief. We're, we're, we persevere in the midst of the pain and, and we come close to God. Speaking of drawing close to God, I, I had heard some stories that apparently back in the day uh, when the family couldn't make it to Mass when they were up at the lake, uh, Richard would hold church, you know, right there on the rocks of, of Lake Superior. Um, 
and it, so in, in the same way that you know we, the, the family would draw close to God in the midst of that time as best as we can we come here today with whatever we're, we're coming to as best as we can to, to pray to, to pray for the, the repose of Richard's soul to pray for one another um, as we all persevere through this time of grief because of this love um, and so in this time let us let us pray well let us celebrate well uh, and draw close to God who wants to draw close to us in the midst of our grief Let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. Unknown caller. Poor Grandpa, may he be welcomed into everlasting peace and joy by family and friends that have gone before him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who are grieving the loss of Grandpa, May they find comfort in the cherished memories and strength in the support of one another during this time of sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Grandpa's strong faith, love for family, and joyful spirit be his legacy for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the staff and caregivers at Vernon Terrace, may they be blessed abundantly for their compassion and dedication. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to live our lives with faith, hope, and love, so that we may one day be reunited with our departed loved ones in the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Grandpa was given the pledge of eternal life. May he now be admitted to the company of all the angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear us in your great love, answer us. We pray always in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Let's be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Richard, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Since we're tight quarters, maybe be seated for, for this part. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, <coughs> saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Richard, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. As Catholics, we believe that uh, here present on the altar, under the sacramental signs of bread and wine, Jesus Christ himself is present, body and blood, soul and divinity. Uh, and that by receiving communion, we express not only our desire to conform our lives to his, uh, but we also express communion uh, with his Catholic Church. Um, and so if you're, if you're not Catholic, we are so happy that you are here, so happy that you're here to, to celebrate, to, to pray with us here today, um, to gather together as a family. Um, for the purposes of communion, um, what I, I think we'll do, we'll have Rachel be our, our kind of usher. Uh, for those who would like to receive communion, you know, a Catholic who's, who's prepared to receive here today, uh, you're welcome to kind of come up forward. Uh, we'll go row by row, and Rachel will direct um, like we normally would for a Sunday Mass. Um, if you're not Catholic or, or you won't be receiving today, uh, you're also more than welcome to come forward. Uh, I ask that you cross your arms over your chest like so, indicating the desire to receive a blessing. You're also more than welcome to remain in your chair. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Richard may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Beautiful to be able to celebrate with you here today, especially in you know this sort of Christmas room, as it were, for, for family significance. I know of our prayers for, for all of you. Um, Richard's name will be in the petitions here this weekend. Uh, for all of our parish masses, so you'll suddenly have about 2,700 people also praying for, for Richard and for all of you during this time, so surprise, I guess. Um, yeah, enjoy the donuts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
I feel.